Lots of really short impulses. That should be a great torture test for a peak detector. Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my cave. I'd like to show you a little side project about generating the signals I needed to test the pulse detection circuit in the OPAMP series. This presentation is going to be a little less formal than usual, because I'm describing a process of groping toward a quick and dirty solution, where getting something working in a hurry is more important than coming up with the best possible solution. It's at least as much about my thought process as about the circuit. I do have a small stash of random 4000 series CMOS parts, so I'll try to use some of these if I can. I don't want to have to order anything for this. I really would like to do it with the parts I've got on hand. The idea here is I want to have coming out of my circuit a series of pulses, narrow pulses, of increasing amplitude. So show how the peak detector captures them. And I need to reset the peak detector periodically. The reset signal could be a short pulse or a longer signal. It doesn't really matter. It should synchronize with the pulse trains. And I'd like at least a couple of cycles of the pulses between resets. So I'm thinking of generating a series of logic-level pulses. With a low duty cycle. And then generating separately a stair-step analog voltage. The logic pulses could trigger an analog switch to connect the output to either the stair step or to ground. So I think I'll wind up with something like this. I'll use my function generator to generate a clock signal. I'll feed the clock into a divide by 16 counter. And if I add together the four bits of that counter, I'll get a pulse se sequence with about a 6% duty cycle. That's about what I want, so that should be good for that part of the circuit. Another divide by 16 will give me a numeric output. that I can feed into an R2R ladder and that will give me the stair step voltage. Kevin? Yes, dear? What the heck is an R2R ladder? Oh Lord, didn't I explain that yet on the channel? I'm going to have to promise you focus on another bonus video, I'm afraid. For the reset signal, I think I can use another divide by 4. That should give me two pulse trains on and two pulse trains off. 
we should do just fine for the reset. That adds up to 10 stages of divider. A 4040 chip is a 12 stage ripple counter. So one of them can serve for all the divisions, I think. The R2R resistor ladder is easy. I've got resistors aplenty. Before we continue, let me make a brief interruption. Many of you know that my content is never paywalled and is free for anyone to learn from. I never beg for money to support the channel. But I do ask something important, that you take care of one another. To that end, the advertising revenue from this YouTube channel goes to charity. My March 2025 payment has gone to the Get Fed Up campaign of Save the Children. The campaign has a single mission, fighting childhood hunger. Of course, that fight has more benefits, because the prosperity of a community depends on education, and you can't fill a child's brain when a child has an empty belly. But more important, I want children to be able to play and dream about their future without worrying where their next meal will come from. I know that Kevin's Cave people are a kind and generous lot, so I'm urging you to join me in supporting this organization using the affiliate link up here or down there or at any rate somewhere nearby. I've set a relatively modest goal of 500 bucks. If even 1% of my subscribers were to give 10 bucks a piece, we meet that goal and feed a classroom of 30 hungry kids for a week. I hope that instead, we'll just crush it. Won't you help out today? The AND function should be easy enough to do, but looking at my box of random CMOS, I found myself scratching my head for a little bit. A 4 input and AND would be a 4082 or a 74HC21. And I came up empty. Well, NOR would give me the same 116th duty cycle, which would be a 4002 or a 74HC25. Again, I don't seem to have one. I could reverse the inputs of the analog switch and use an OR or a NAND instead. A 4 input OR would be a 4072 or a 74HC20. None of those either. Wow, I'm really coming up input empty here of four input NANDs, 4012 or 74HC802. None of those either. Can I really not have any four input gates in the box of CMOS? Maybe eight input ones. Those come in NAND, which would be 4068 or 74HC3. 30, none of those either. And they come in NOR, which is 4078. No, none of that either. I don't seem to have any white gates at all. Okay, I do have a 4073. Yeah, that's a three input AND. I can use two of that to get the logic pulses. And I already mentioned I've had uh, 4053 for the analog switch function. Okay, so let me take this design and transcribe it into KiCad so I get the IC pinouts and such on a drawing. I'll leave the schematic on the project GitHub, and I'll post a link somewhere nearby. So, if you, if you want to see it, there is a pretty schematic up on the GitHub. So let me set this thing up on the breadboard and probe it with the scope. Testing the circuit should be fairly straightforward. I'll start by probing various outputs of the ripple counter. And they all look like divisions of the input signal. The reset signal looks OK too. I'll probe the output of the AND gate, and I see a series of narrow, short, logic level pulses. And the output of the analog switch looks like the pulses of increasing amplitude that I want. The peak detector is seeing the solid reset signal, and the pulse sequence is synchronized with it, so the detected peak level after resetting it should rise in stair steps. 
But I have a problem. When the reset signal is released, the output voltage immediately jumps back up to nearly the highest peak. If I zoom in on that transition, you can see why. The falling edge of the reset pulse and the falling edge of the input pulse are racing one another. When reset is fully released, the peak detector is still seeing most of the input voltage, and that becomes the new peak. Delaying the reset to give the input time to drop all the way should fix the problem. I could have come up with some Boolean function to the divider outputs to give me the delayed reset, but I didn't want to disturb what I already had on the breadboard, so I decided simply to introduce an analog delay. I used two stages of a 40106 hex Schmidt trigger. One stage simply inverts the reset signal. Next comes an RC low pass filter. Which smears out the transition. A second Schmidt trigger will trigger at about half the logic voltage to give me the delayed signal. I'll use 10k for the resistor because of course all resistors are 10k until proven otherwise. We engineers like making the arithmetic easy. Now I need to figure out how big this capacitor has to be. Oh yes, and this will be the final reset signal. Remember that we're dealing with a simple RC filter, and it's effectively unloaded because the input impedance of the next stage is extremely high. When the inverted reset line rises suddenly from ground to 5 volts, the output of the filter will decay exponentially between the same two voltages, and we know the formula for the voltage as a function of time. If I want a particular voltage at a given time, I can solve this equation for the capacitance. We know the voltages that the input is swinging between. The trigger voltages of a 40106 have a ton of production variability, but our exact trigger time isn't all that critical, so neither is the trigger voltage. I'll assume that the trigger trips at half the logic voltage. That lets us simplify the argument of the logarithm. I want to delay the reset signal by about 50 microseconds. And I already said that all resistors are 10k until proven otherwise. That gives me something I can put into a calculator. And I get a desired capacitance of about 7.2 nanofarads. The nearest one I have in my box of polyester capacitors is 6.8 nanofarads. As I said, the exact value of the delay isn't that critical. Let's run with it. Here's the modified circuit on the breadboard. The old reset signal is coming into the input of the Schmidt trigger. The output of the first Schmidt trigger is the inverted version of it. The RC filter smears out the transition on the inverse exponential curve and the second Schmidt trigger triggers on a threshold value on that curve, giving a delayed version of the signal. The delay is 84 microseconds, a little longer than the 50 I was shooting for. And that's because this particular 40106 appears to have a transition voltage of about 3.5 volts. That should still work perfectly well. I'm not going to mess with it. The delayed reset still fall nicely between the input pulses. I'll fire up the circuit and move the reset from the old signal to the new. And now the peak detector is putting out good stair steps. The voltage after reset isn't quite zero, 
and I suspect that's because the reset is coupling some noise onto the input line. I'm far too lazy to track that down. This output is good enough to demonstrate the peak detector. This is the test rig I used to demonstrate the peak detector in the other videos. I hope this little digression will give you some insight about how I throw together a circuit that will be used once and thrown away. I still need to present what to do about the low-speed peak detector, where the voltage droop made the outputs unusable. That'll come up in the next video on the main series. I'll also give you another episode on that R2R ladder pretty soon, I promise. Perhaps you might want to tell the YouTube algorithm that you want to see more videos like these. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay curious, and please take care of one another. Like my channel's generous contributors to the Get Fed Up campaign, Daniel van der Bent, Andy Kirkham, Charles Lowmiller, Ray Otwell, John Shepard, and eight donors who wish to remain anonymous. Kevin's cave people are a wonderful lot. Thank you all. Bye.